Well, welcome back to Pod Packa. We have another terrific guest with us today. Uh, here's our next guest. Hi, I'm Terry Schultz. I'm with the Wapaka Area Chamber of Commerce, and I am a Wapaka native. Welcome, Terry. Hi, thanks, Tim. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to be with you, Joe. So you said you grew up in Wapaka, uh, and did you ever think that you would be involved with the chamber at Wapaka? Um, is that something that you had interest in at a young age? Absolutely not. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a nurse. Uh, found out that is not my forte. I'm not good with blood and that's not good. Um, no, and actually, you know, I think most kids or small children have no idea what a chamber of commerce is. So that was not even a thought in my head at all. I bet not only just kids not know what it is. I bet some adults do too. Can you explain what the Chamber of Commerce is and how does the Chamber help Wapaka? Absolutely. So actually, we're a business organization. We're a nonprofit organization. And so our mission is to be an advocate for our businesses. So businesses pay to be long to our, what we want to say is they invest in our chamber. They invest in us or pay to be a part of our, our chamber. And we work on programs that um, not only help businesses in general, but help the community in general. So it might be something, um, you know, we work on economic development issues. Uh, we try to help educate businesses. If somebody's looking to start a business, we try to help them get that up and going or um, find the right connections for them to, to find out what they need to do in order to start a business. Um, it might be somebody calling us and saying, uh, we want to move our business here. We need a building. Can you help us find a building? And so we kind of work on a wide a range of things for businesses, but our basic mission is to be an advocate for businesses. So that can fall under many hats. On that note, is there somebody, uh, say a young person came up to me with an idea for a business and it uh, is there someone in particular I could put them in contact with at your office to, to help guide them through, you know, developing a business plan or wanting to go to do that and everything? Actually, I would probably say they'd get directed to me. Um, and I personally don't know how to write a business plan, but I know how to make connections with the right people that do know those things. Um, we work very closely with like the Small Business Development Center. We work closely with the SCORE organization. Uh, Fox Valley Technical College, the state chamber. So, you know, depending on what the question is and what the need is, we would probably direct them to, to another organization that could help them. Um, it might be CAP services if they're looking for some maybe financial help or so, or the County Economic Development Corporation. So it really depends on the specific question. Um, if we can't personally help them, we would try to connect them with the right person. You got pretty good resources then. So. We do. We do. We have great resources and we like to work together with other organizations because we know our staff can't be experts in everything, um, but there are other organizations that are. And so we like to team up with them and um, kind of support each other, I guess is what you'd say. In order to get help from yourself or someone at the chamber, do you have to be a Wapaka resident or in the area or a chamber member in order to get the resources from you guys? No, absolutely not. Um, we're happy to help anybody who's looking to start a business or looking to move a business here. Um, you know, eventually we hope that if you do that, that you do become an investor in the chamber. Um, but when you're starting out, we know that that's not always possible, and we want to help as much as we can. And what, what kind of businesses mostly join the chamber? Is it mostly businesses with physical locations? I know there's a lot more online uh, businesses now. Are those also chamber members? Mm -hmm. We kind of have a mix. If you actually look at the breakdown of our, our um, investors, I would probably say 80% of them are small businesses. So it's a one person business or a family owned business, um, might be a retailer or a service type industry. Um, but then we have up to very large um, businesses. We have nonprofits. So yeah, it's kind of a, a mix. How long have you been at the chamber? Um, in August, it will be 30 years. 
Wow, congratulations. Thanks. I'm very proud of that. There, this industry is a hard industry because you're working with a lot of different people and your um, boss is kind of a board of directors. And so depending on how that works out, um, people have a hard, some people have a hard time with that. I've been very fortunate and have had great boards to work with and um, love my community. So it, it makes it a lot easier. But, have you always been the chamber president then for the whole time? Uh, yeah, for those 30 years I have been. Um, before that, I was actually on the board of directors for the chamber and served at that time, it was called the president. We now call it the chairman of the board, uh, okay. but I was actually president of the chamber board at that time or chairman. Um, and that's how I got involved. I sat on committees and finally worked my way up to the board of directors. And here I am. <laughs> did you own a business previous to being uh, involved with the chamber? I did not own a business. Uh, I managed a clothing store in Wapaka. Okay. Um, that was owned locally and managed that for almost 12 years before right. uh, taking this position. So I've seen the business side. I know what businesses go through and it was a good transition to have that background. Something else I've noticed that seems uh, that I appreciate about the chamber. I'm trying to think back because I've been around here for a while, but it seems like you've had the same staff for a very long time. I have. <laughs> Which is nice. It's, it you know. is. It's great. We're kind of a working machine here. Um, I think Kathy has been with us for 15 years. Mitch is at that, I think, 10-year um, mark. And Lynn has been here, oh my, I think 20 years. And then just in the recent year, we brought on uh, Beth Nash, who is our Inspire Director, She's not just our um, employee. We share her on a countywide basis. And then we also have a shared um, grant writer, which we share with the city of Wapaka and the school district of Wapaka. Um, but both of those people are technically chamber employees. But like I said, we share those positions with those other entities. So I haven't heard of, you said Beth's an Inspire director or something? What's... Yep. Inspire is a program that um, helps students um, kind of search for careers, do um, job shadows, apprenticeships, mock interviews, uh, maybe a tour of a, a business. You know, they might connect up if somebody said, you know, I think, I think I'd like to be an engineer, but I'd really like to know what an engineer does or how that works or you know, what kind of money do they make? And so through Inspire, you can actually ask for a, um, an interview with a, an engineer or any type of a um, career. So we're doing that program on a countywide basis. Um, and so all of the school districts in Wapaka County are a part of the program and um, students have access to all of that information um, through an online program that the um, state mandates that the schools have. Um, it's called Zello. And so all of our school districts are connected to it. And then um, Beth actually makes those connections with the businesses to, to sign up and be a part of the Inspire program. She's only, she hasn't even been here a year. So it's, it's pretty new. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, if when, back when I was in high school, I would have loved to be able to do that. <laughs> Did you ever try to go outside of Wapaka or of a small town community? Because it sounds like you've grown up here and then stayed here for a long time. I graduated high school, moved away for four years, lived in North Carolina. But then that part of my life did not work out well. So I came back to Wapaka and um, decided that I think when you're in high school, you want to get away from your hometown and you don't really want to live here and you don't want to be near your parents. And so you can move off. But I think after those four years, I figured out, you know, Wapaka isn't all that bad. And when I moved back, I um, found out that it really is a great place. Um, and so, yeah, I've been here a long time. What growth have you noticed in not only yourself and the small community around you while you've been here and been the chamber president? 
A lot, a lot, a lot. I think when I started, um, you know, the industrial park was not as big as it was. I mean, we worked on a number of getting a number of businesses to move into the industrial park. Back when I started, we actually had a corporation. We didn't have it, it was a separate corporation. Uh, it was the Wapaka Economic Development Corporation. I think they help like the foundry expand, those types of things. And so we worked real closely with them when businesses would be looking for a location. So I've seen a lot of growth out in that area. Um, you know, I think our downtown has really flipped. When I grew up, we had, I mean, Friday nights, Wapaka downtown was the place to shop. You always did all your shopping on Friday night. Everybody was open. You know, I think that's changed over the years and we had a bunch of empty storefronts. Um, now it's very hard to find an empty storefront in our, in our downtown. What went from mom and pop shops went to having larger um, stores. So like we had Kmart and Shopco and those types of businesses. So we saw that transition. Now I think it's turned back into Main Street and a lot of smaller businesses. Um, you know, who would think that a, a community our size could have a kitchen shop and could have a popcorn shop and, you know, all of those kind of individualized type businesses. Um, so we've seen a lot of change and growth um, in our community. Um, it's pretty interesting to, to actually see that. Um, you know, I think our industries have grown. I mean, if you look at the foundry and how many people or how big they are and how many people they employ, um, there's been a lot of changes in 30 years. And I think it's all positive. I mean, even from having empty storefronts to now not having empty storefronts, uh, there's just, it's been a huge, huge, huge change. Are the number of small businesses in the Wapaka community about average for a town around 6,000 people, or is it a lot higher, lower? I think I would say it's probably a little higher than the norm. I mean, if you look, Wapaka is kind of a misnomer, I think. Uh, the city is about just over 6,000, but then when you look at all of the population that's in the townships that surround us, so we have Farmington, Dayton, Lynn, and Wapaka, when you bring that population into us, we're at about 15,000 people. So I think you really have to compare Wapaka to um, communities that are more in that size range than city proper. And mm -hmm. so if you compare it that way, I think we're probably equal. But if you compare it from a community that's only 6,000 people, we have obviously a lot more businesses, a lot more services than than you would see in that size community, including having healthcare facilities. I mean, to have clinics and a hospital, you don't find, normally find that in a community that's 6,000, but if you look a little bit bigger, it's a little more normal. What would you say is your favorite part of being the chamber president? Boy, every day is different. As much as it might be the same, it's different. You never know who you're going to talk to. You never know who's going to walk through the door. You know, Tim might walk in the door and say, I need to connect with somebody that knows this. I'd be happy to introduce you. I love doing that and then seeing what the outcome is. I can remember when there was a business that was looking to open and they needed a spot. And so I can still to this day say, I helped that business find a spot and become a success. I didn't do anything to make them a success, but I know that helping them find a location was key to them um, growing their business or starting their business. So um, I think that's my favorite part is that you just never know what you're gonna be doing from day to day as much as you have to do certain things. There might be one thing in the day that you get to help somebody make themselves or a business successful. I think when you love your community, you want what's best for it. And so if you can think outward and um, participate or help it grow, that's just a positive. If, if I die tomorrow, I hope people know that I love my community and that I wanted it to be a better community. And those are the things that I strive to do, so. Sometimes it is hard finding the right spot, especially if you're stubborn and don't wanna just settle. <laughs> 
And you should never settle, right? <laughs> should never say, no. <laughs> Hold out and keep looking. So. That's right. That's right. Because tomorrow's a different day. <laughs> So if anyone wanted to get involved with the Chamber of Commerce in their small community or in Wapaka, as far as being a staff member of or working with the Chamber, what should they do? How did you get to the position you are at today? Well, I was kind of lucky. <laughs> First off, I would suggest that you go in and talk to the other staff members or talk to the president or CEO and um, kind of get on their radar because you never know when a position might open up or they need extra um, help or looking at putting on a new position in their staff. Um, I think every chamber is always looking for volunteers. If that's something that you wanna volunteer for, you know, just go in and talk to them and um, make that connection. But as staff wise, um, just kind of stay on their radar. I mean, at some point, somebody's going to retire or find a different job and they're going to have an opening and um, you definitely want to be on their radar that they call you up and talk with you. If someone doesn't want to be on the staff, but they want to be a member of the chamber, what, what do you tell them to get them to join the chamber? If they're like, oh, I don't know. Uh, why should they do it compared to not being a chamber member? I guess it really depends on their business and what they're looking for. A retailer might be looking for something totally different than what a manufacturer is looking for. I mean, from a manufacturing side, I can say we can help you with HR, we can help you with finding employees, uh, we can help you maybe with some educational stuff that you might not be able to find in other places. If you're a retailer, we can talk about how we always make referrals to our business investors versus a non-investor. And we have a gift certificate program. And so it really depends on sitting down and actually talking to that person and finding out what their needs are and what they're looking for. And then I can hopefully give you a reason why the chamber would be the place to be connected. Although there are some studies that say if a business belongs to a chamber, the consumer is more likely by 75% to go to a business that's a chamber investor versus a business that is not. Is that for any business or just like specific ones? No, nope, for every business. Oh, wow. And that includes, um, I think also uh, employee-wise. It has a lot to do with showing that you support the community as a whole versus a business that does not. I think that has a lot to do with it. I think when you move to a community, you want to move to a community that's all inclusive and is helpful in many ways. And I think that kind of leads out that way. Why did you want to stay the chamber president for 30 years since it seems like a lot of others want to step down after like past a 10 year point? Uh, because you could still be involved with the chamber, just not in that role. Is there just something about being the president that is so rewarding for you compared to other roles? First off, I think I was raised that when you get a job, you do your best and you, you don't hop around jobs. Um, and that's how I was raised. I mean, my mom and dad had the same business, same jobs for years and years. So I think that was instilled in me. But I just found it very rewarding to be able to work with so many different people and work on so many different things. I mean, um, when I think about when I first started at the chamber and where we were at and what we were doing, and I look at what we are doing now and where we're at, I mean, it's it's a huge difference. And so it was just fun to do those growing and you know doing different things and talking with different people and I don't know, I just. I've really enjoyed it. I think it will be when the retirement day ever comes, that's going to be a hard day. <laughs> well, you know, some of that's just, I think in your case, just determination to, to see things through. Yep. But also I wanted to ask you, because one of the side effects I noticed from, like you said, opening stores and, and things like that, that I didn't really expect was the social aspect everyone seems to have kind of an open door policy almost nobody in town you can't sit down and have a drink with or whatever I mean 
Yep. Yep. And, and you know, that's one of the things that we do. We try to hold some networking events because we want businesses to do business with business, other businesses in our community, rather than, you know, I need this. And so I'm going to go out of town to find it or get help with it. Um, so I think, you know, that's one of the things that we try to do is to try to make those connections. And so if you come to one of our networking events, we hope that you will walk around and meet people and find out what they do. And, you know, I can pinpoint people that have come to those events and that they've made those connections and um, they're working together. So, um, and I think Wapaka is pretty open to that. I think, like you said, Tim, you know, if you have a question for somebody, they're happy to sit down and talk with you. They might not give you all their secrets, <laughs> but they're willing to share, you know, their successes or like you said, things that didn't go right um, mm -hmm. because they want you to be successful too. And if you're successful, then they're successful and it just helps the community as a whole. I know you do the networking events, but I know you also have business awards. Uh, what are the business awards that you do and how does that work? So once a year, we hold an award ceremony. It's usually in January. And we like to do, we like to recognize businesses that have um, been successful in the year or have done something special. And so we do a small business and a large business of the year award. We do a rising star. So somebody that's been in business from one to five years. Um, and then we also do facelift awards. So anybody who's done anything to the front of their building or the inside of their building or have um, moved to a new location, um, somebody that has put some effort into their building in general, uh, we do those awards. And out of all of those facelift awards, we do a grand facelift. Um, and all of the awards are decided by either a committee or chamber investors as a whole um, vote on them. So it's not chamber staff deciding who receives them. Um, we do have committees that kind of look at all of the people that have been nominated and uh, determine what's the best, the best fit for that award for the year. So we do that once a year. Um, and then we also do a, a Ruby Award which is given to a young professional in our community that has done well in our community and is continuing in his success or her success in their field or in their business. And Ruby Awards stands for recognizing the upward, bright, and young. Also, you have a relocation campaign. We are. So the city and the school district of Wapaka, I talked about how we have a joint grant writer along with the chamber. Um, we, the three of us are working on a relocation campaign. So we're trying to establish a website that will be kind of a one-stop uh, place to find out information about area. So if you're looking for a new job and you have the opportunity to interview in Wapaka somewhere, you can go to this website and find out anything you'd want to know about Wapaka, whether it's What's the housing market like, or are there rentals available, or um, what are our schools like, um, and what do our schools offer, uh, what there is for shopping and dining and um, sports and leisure and anything you can think of, this site will help you with that. Or you might say, I'm coming for an interview, or I just want to explore the community, I would love to get a tour of the community. Um, and so we're going to look at trying to have people lined up that could give you a tour to the uh, community and maybe sit down and talk with you. And then from an employer's standpoint, they would be able to say, I do have somebody coming in and we would love for you to have set up kind of a tour with them or they're really concerned about, you know, how will their child fit into the school district and we'll line up um, maybe a lunch or a dinner with another parent and so they can sit and talk about that. So we're looking for ways to um, kind of make this a one-stop shop. Once that website is up and running, there's a number of things that we've talked about on, on how we want to market it and who we want to reach. But we're looking for um, a way to help our employers find employees and we're also looking to just grow our population, which helps everybody, not only our large businesses, but our small businesses, if we have more people in town, they shop more locally and it helps everybody all the way around. So 
Um, we're working on that and we're hoping that that will go live um, this fall. Do you believe in the chamber that has the program that welcomes the new incoming teachers? We do. We do that once a year. We take them on a tour of the community. We hop on a school bus, uh, take a tour of the community, and we have businesses sponsor those people. And then they get to um, have lunch with them. And we normally do it at the boathouse um, at, on, the, on the water. So they get to kind of see the lakes and what that's like. And they get to interact with our business community. Um, and hopefully make connections with those people in our community so that if they're doing a class or they want somebody to come in as a speaker, they've made those connections. So it's a fun event. We've had a uh, great response and um, great feedback from the teachers and the staff that attend it. So yeah, it's a neat event. I, I've gotten so many great answers when asking this question. So I want to see what you, you say. No oh, problem. No. Um, <laughs> okay. But what do you think people underestimate about your job and position at the chamber? I guess, what do you think people don't realize about your job? I think most people don't understand what my job is. And I I'll be honest, when I took this job over, I knew what the chamber was because I had been involved with it, but not to the extent that it is. So I think that's part of it is, you know, one minute you might be talking to the CEO of a major corporation and the next minute you're talking to somebody who's walking in the door that wants to know the history of the community or, um, you know, they're here for the weekend, what's there to see and do. So it's just a very diverse job. And I don't think most people really understand that. I think they see the community events, so they know that you do those types of things. And I think really that's the misnomer. People just really don't know everything that a chamber does or a chamber exec does. And it really depends on the community you're in. I mean, if you're in a larger community, your chamber might be doing a lot different than what our chamber is doing in a smaller community. It's kind of like owning a small business. I mean... <laughs> Tim, you do whatever you have to do to make your business run, right? And so um, that's kind of what this job is. How long have you and Jim been together? Um, we have been together 39 years. Oh, congratulations. Thanks. Oh, cool. And I credit a lot of my job to him. Okay. He's very supportive. And when I first said, somebody asked me if I wanted this job and he's like, why wouldn't you do it? And I'm like, I don't think I can do it. And he was, he was just there and very supportive and kind of gave me the confidence to do it. So without him, I don't know that I'd be here. Thank you again, Terry, for being on PodPACA. If you have any questions about WAPACA, if you are someone that's looking to move to WAPACA or is new to the area, unfamiliar with the area, the WAPACA chamber is a good first step into finding out more information of whatever you're looking for. Podpaca wise make sure to follow us on social media and to subscribe to our YouTube and whatever podcast platform you may be using. And thanks, thank you all for listening. Thanks again, Terry. Appreciate you and your staff. Thank you. Thank you. That's very kind. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Podpaca. Uh, today, we have a familiar face and a familiar guest on if you've listened to past episodes of Podpaca. Today, we have the author of Accused, the Witch Trial of Margaret Faust. Here is our guest for today. Thank you, Joe, for having me. I really appreciate it. My name is Greg Biba. I'm happy to be here, and I'm from Opaca. Well, welcome back. Uh, this is the third time you've been on, and this is the third new book that we have gone to discuss I'm so excited, and congratulations, by the way. This is your third new book in almost a year span. That is really impressive. I really appreciate it, Joe. It's a new, another Ancestry book, actually. So this is your second Ancestry book, correct? Okay. Yep, that's right. The other one is called 900 Miles to Plenty Wood. Yeah, 900 Miles to Plenty Wood was the first Ancestry mm -hmm. book that we talked about last time. And then right. before that, uh, we also discussed uh, the Death Wish at Machu Picchu, yep. mm -hmm. uh, but this time it's accused the witch trial of Margaret Faust, which happened in the later half of the 16th century. Well, how did you find uh, this family history? 
Well, Joe, um, my brother, Scott, was very instrumental in, in writing the book. Uh, he basically did a lot of the research when he went over to Germany on a business trip year, years ago. And uh, he talked to my mom and she said, where are you going? Houdinge in Germany. And she said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have a relative, their distant relative in 1697 was accused of being a witch. No way. So he, he pleaded with his boss to let me have a couple more days off so he could do some research. He was on a tour, a personal tour from a tour guide and went to a witch's tower and witch's castle and the rest is history. And just to let everyone know, this book is good for mostly all ages. Would you say middle school yeah. and up? You would yeah, say? for sure, for sure, yeah, absolutely. And uh, it is a pretty short book as well. It's not going to be a difficult long read. This is something that you can knock out in a day, I would say, yeah. and that's great uh, to learn all this information in such a short time. How long did it take you to uh, create this book? Because this is a very great story. Well, my brother basically did a lot of the research initially. It was, it was a couple of years in the works, and then. He and I teamed up about a year, about a year, roughly. What made you want to do the book with your brother? When your old relative is accused of being a witch, you know, <laughs> and ends up killing herself because of it, because of the torture, you know, you got you to gotta find out what, what's going on, you know. That's why we did it. Well, here, just to read some more information about the book. Uh, so the later half of the 16th century, the people of Boone Judge, Germany, led a very unpleasant existence. The return of the plague in 1596 resulted in madness and great loss in their population and livestock. These conditions were disastrous uh, for their agricultural societies such as theirs. Consequently, uh, their city gates were closed and guarded with extra enforcement so that it would be kept away. In this Thaian community, women learned to heal with plants or what they had uh, for, uh, for cures using medicine. Uh, witch hunts then found a renewed focus. So on May 4th, the village bailiff, those accused of witchery before the mayor, among those accused was Margaret Faust, uh, declared her innocence, uh, driven into a corner by questions. She uttered a similar statement as that of um, Elan Anna. Uh, if accused of sorcery, she too wanted the names of others who practice witchcraft it probably never occurred to her that her demand was taken as a confession, which set into motion the final events of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, so can you talk about why was Margaret accused of being a witch? Well, she was accused because she had some, uh, I think she had a deformity in her eye and uh, some physical ailments. And uh, I think that, that was basically it. You know, you're guilty before being proved innocent back then. Compared to other witches at the time in Germany, is she talked about a lot? Um, not that I know of. I was asked if there's a gravesite for her, and there is not. I know she's buried there still, and she's buried underneath the gallows by the jail. I want to make sure that people also know that this is something that you can get off of Amazon. Right. And then also, if you're in the Wapaka area, make sure to... Uh, shop local and you mm -hmm. can find uh, greg's books locally in some local shops uh, really? which include office outfitters northern home uh, amongst many yep bookseller good antiques and king um so oh, there's oh, a lot of places you can get it but if you're outside of the wapak area make sure to get it off amazon including that's right. where you can find all of greg's books yeah. is off of amazon was there anything that you wanted to make sure to talk about with uh, your new book that you wanted to mention to your readers? I think you mentioned earlier, it's not real long. It's very readable. You can do it in a couple of days. And uh, I think if you, if you read it, you're going to enjoy it um, and find out what, what it was like to be accused of being a witch way back then. This book is great. It really is, Greg. Like, I, you know, this is, this is, a, this is just a great, awesome read. I hope everyone... Uh, gets the chance to pick this up if you're in the Wapaka area of course it's in lots of local shops but of course get it off of Amazon as well this is Ancestry book number two so just to give some reference of some of the differences between the witch trials in Germany and then Salem witch trials for the 
Germany witch trials, there were uh, 16,474 people that were put on trial for witchcraft. Well, and also in Germany, there's approximately 7,000 that were sentenced and uh, killed. So for the Salem witch trials, there's only 25 innocent women, men, and children. So the Germany witch trials were much, much larger in scale than what happened in Salem. Imagine because it was so much earlier. Yeah, the Salem witch trials were in 1692. And then the uh, Germany witch trials were in the, uh, well, well, there were, some of them were in from 1625, 1631, but some are also in the 16th century. Right. Mm -hmm. In Europe, not just Germany, there was 40 to 60,000 people that were put to death for witchcraft, according to um, historical consensus. So this is your second book in the Family Ancestry series. Do you have a plan for the third book in the Family Ancestry I'm series? Thinking about, I'm thinking about it, Joe. Um, actually, might take a trip down to Missouri back in the Civil War. Um, my mom's got some more skeletons in her closet. Or, you know, like a great, great uncle, I think, like in the Plainwood book, she had a great uncle who was going to be the first town cop in 1906 in Plainwood. But now in the Civil War, I think they'd be like great great uncle. She had two great uncles, and then they uh, one went north, one went south, and fought against each other in the Civil War. That might be my next one. Well, what are you doing these days now? What what do you what are you doing uh, to take a break from writing? Oh, well, I play in some bands. I play in the Wapaka City Band, which is done now for the year. Wild Rose Band, Kimberly Band, and also River City's Jazz Big Band, playing with sax in those groups. Thank you again, Greg, for being on and talking about your new book. Everyone, make sure to go read it. Uh, it's a great, great book. It really is. Thank you, Greg, for being on. My pleasure, Joe. Thank you so much for having me.